my name is Carmen and welcome to my channel. In this tutorial video, I'm going to show you um, how to knit swatches, how to block swatches, how to measure stitches on your swatch. I have a bunch of tips and techniques I'm dying to show you. I have a lot of ground to cover in this tutorial video, so if you're looking for a specific part, just look in the description box and I'll have some timestamps so you can skip right to the part uh, that you're interested in. Now we all know the importance of knitting a swatch before you start your actual project. It helps um, to get the fit the way you want it to fit. Um, and a swatch can be just uh, in stock and net stitch. Uh, that depends on your project. Um, it can also be a stitch, uh, a stitch pattern. Uh, I have some examples here. Um, in any case, it could be nice to add a little garter uh, edge to your swatch. This helps to, um, this prevents the swatch from um, from rolling up at the edges. But actually, I have not done a garter stitch, uh, stitch edge here, and uh, after blocking it was completely flat. So, um, but still it might help. Uh, the second thing is, uh, how many stitches do you cast on for your swatch? I have a swatch here that is not in stockinette. I'm going to talk some more about that later. So how many stitches do you actually cast on for your swatch? You're going to look at the gauge listed for each um, stitch pattern. So this stitch pattern is called the B stitch and is used in a pattern from Pom Pom Quarterly. And um, I'm going to take a quick look at the pattern here. It says that the gauge is 21 stitches to 30 rows equals 10 centimeters square. So what that means is uh, you're going to have to, you're going to want to have at least 10 centimeters square uh, to measure your gauge. If 21 stitches equals 10 centimeters um, in the width, I'm going to want to cast on at least 21 stitches, but actually you should allow for uh, a margin at the edges. So um, like for example, say I, I would have just 10 centimeters, then it will be very difficult for me to get an accurate gauge with this edge that is rolling up even after blocking. So for this swatch, um, so 10 centimeters should equal 21 stitches, but I cast it on 40 stitches just to be on the safe side. Uh, and 30 rows should equal a 10 centimeters. So I want to continue uh, knitting it for at least 30 rows, preferably more. And how do you work swatches in a stitch that is not stock net stitch? Well, actually it is very simple. You first determine the cast, uh, how many stitches you want to cast on. So I thought I would cast on 40 stitches and then you take a look at the uh, stitch pattern and the stitch pattern will just tell you what to do and when to do it. So um, I had to, for example, here I purled seven stitches before I did the B stitch or actually the B stitches worked in this row here. So I worked seven stitches here before working the B stitch. Um, but that just depends on the stitch pattern and um, it will be totally clear. So if in the gauge requirements it asks you to uh, make a gauge swatch in the stitch pattern, please also do that because since this, you know, it has, it is simply stuck in it actually with a few uh, details, but um, those details might cause your gauge to be much different than when in, when just knitting stockinette. So uh, please do keep in mind to always knit in the stitch pattern that they require of you in the, in the, in the pattern. Now how do you know which uh, size needles to use for your swatch? 
Uh, first, I always use the needle size listed in the pattern, which in this case is a 4mm needle. So I did this swatch with a 4mm needle. Um, if my gauge um, would be off, uh, like for example, I have too many stitches per 10 centimeters or too few stitches per 10 centimeters, uh, then I would um, then I would always be able to choose a different needle size for this swatch. Also make sure that you have the same weight yarn as specified in the pattern since that really makes a difference. Now I have my swatch ready to be washed and blocked. Uh, let me show you how to um, to wash and block your swatch without cutting off the yarn. Usually we only buy enough yarn for the actual project and uh, don't calculate uh, any extra yarn for the swatch. Or maybe it's uh, this uh, indie dyed yarns which are, you know, more, more pricey and you don't want to spend any more uh, money on yarn for just a swatch. So sometimes you're gonna want to use this yarn again. Um, so I'm just going to show you how to, uh, to do that with your yarn still attached. Uh, now for this swatch I have alternated skeins, so there's two yarns attached. Um, if you're curious to hear more about alternating skeins, I also have a tutorial for that, so please go check it out. Um, I have my uh, loop here of the yarn that I used to cast it off. Uh, and I have my two strands here. I'm just gonna uh, knot it once. Um, it probably won't let loose, but just for that extra bit of protection. And now we're going to wash the swatch. So I have a little basin of water here and I'm just gonna put the swatch right into there. I've added some Eucalyptus to this uh, water. It's uh, cold water. You don't want to use uh, warm water when washing your swatch. And you see, you see that the yarn here uh, is getting into the water, but that's, that's all right. Uh, you just don't want to dunk uh, your entire ball of yarn in here. Um, so actually I'm not gonna squish it that much. I'm just gonna make sure the water is um, in all the way through and I'm just gonna leave that for about 10 minutes. So my swatch has been in the water for at least 10 minutes now. So I'm gonna, um, well first I'm gonna take the towel. So I have it close. So I have a towel handy. Then I'm going to take the swatch out of the water really gently. Also the yarns that were dipped and I'm going to squeeze most of the water out. There, now I'm going to lay it flat or as flat as possible on my towel. I'm going to um, fold the edges and I'm kind of going to roll it up and squeeze. Do not wring it since that might distort your swatch. If it's on the ground you can stand on it. Please don't wear socks when standing on a towel that you're blocking something with because your socks will get wet. Um, so I wringed most of the water out. Now I'm going to take it off of the towel. Um, ideally, you will put it on a blocking board. I have this one here from uh, Knit Pro. And you're going to lay uh, you're gonna lay it flat. Now if you don't have a, a foam mat like this, 
You could also take a plastic bag or maybe some, um, some of that wrap used to uh, keep food fresh, you know what I mean? Plastic wrap and just lay, uh, lay it on the table. That will be fine. You just need a surface that won't absorb any of the water because if it absorbs water, then uh, the surface will be wet and then your block and your swatch will not be able to dry as easily. So you're just going to lay it flat. And I do have some blocking pins right here from Knit Pro. They are these T pins. Uh, I'm not going to use those because you're going to want to uh, block your swatch the way you are going to dry your finished product. In this case, I'm making a cardigan later. Um, and I'm not going to want to pin my garments. Uh, I'm just going to take them out of the washing machine or in this case probably hand wash them and lay them flat. So that's exactly what I'm going to do with this swatch. I'm not going to do any pinning. And I'm just going to wait until it's dry. Now after you've uh, washed and blocked your swatch and let it dry, you can actually uh, measure the gauge on your swatch. I'm going to show you how to count the stitches on your swatch. You'll need a tape measure for that. Uh, Maya is in centimeters, also in inches, but I'm going to measure it in centimeters. Um, you see that the right side here has purl stitches. Personally, I find purl stitches more difficult to count. So I'm just going to flip it over and count my stitches on the stockinette side. This does not matter um, for the accuracy or accuracy of your uh, gauge um, swatch since they are the same stitches just a different side uh, I find it more easy to count stockinette stitches so I'm just gonna do that on this side and uh, now it is quite important as to where you measure to count your stitches I wouldn't measure at the border here I would measure in the middle. Uh, so in the middle of, of a row. Um, and I see that here uh, there's this area where it kind of puckers together. So that might not result in the most accurate stitch count for me. So I'm going to look at a um, section where it is most regular and also where it doesn't have this B stitch in between. So I'm gonna place my uh, tape measure here and I'm gonna make sure that this line at the zero right here is gonna line up with the beginning of a stitch. So I'm just gonna so here I'm going to start counting and I'm just going to make sure the tape measure is all the way flat. All right, so I'm going to count until there. So, 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 3, 6, 8. So I have 18 stitches per 10 centimeters. And if you'll recall, my... Um, uh, the gauge listed in the pattern is 21 stitches per 10 centimeters. So that means my stitches are bigger than the ones stated in the pattern. So that means I would have to go down a needle size so my stitches can be smaller so that I can cram more stitches into that 10 centimeters. Now let's measure the row gauge. Again, you'll want to do this in a regular area with no um, special stitches. So you just want to measure the stockinette. And this can be tricky because 10 centimeters is quite a lot. Um, I'm going to measure it right here. All right. 
So again, I'm going to line it up with the start of the stitch. And I'm just going to count 3, 6, 9, 10, 3, 6, 9, 20, 3, 6, 9, 30. All right, so actually my row gauge is um, the same as in the pattern. So that means my rows are long enough or short enough. They're just the same as stated in the pattern, but my stitches are too wide. So um, I'm gonna make another swatch with a smaller needle size. So from four millimeter needle size, I'm gonna go down to a 3.5 millimeter needle size. I'm sorry, I'm not sure what that is in US, but you just simply go down um, one needle size. If it would be really drastically different, for example, if I got, well, three, three stitches off per 10 centimeters is already quite off. But say if it was five stitches per 10 centimeters, I might want to go down two needle sizes. So my first swatch worked on four millimeter needles, uh, had two big stitches. So I made a second swatch with 3.5 millimeter needles and I'm going to do uh, the same thing again. I'm going to um, measure my stitches and I'm going to do it again on the knit side. And I'm going to find a place uh, where there are regular stitches and I'm just going to line my tape measure up with the beginning of a stitch. Oh, that this might get too far to or too close to the border. So I'm going to move it. Yeah, this would do. All right. So I'm going to start counting here. So three, six, nine, ten, three, six, nine, twenty. And that last stitch, well, maybe, maybe it's not a one entire stitch. Let me give you a little close up there. So you can see the line of the 10 is not exactly at the end of the stitch. It's more, well, it's a little bit over the center of the stitch. So, um, so it's close to 20 and a half or 21 stitches per 10 centimeters. And um, it might be silly, but that kind of maybe half a stitch, maybe 0 0.4 stitches does make a difference because um, you see this is only 10 centimeters but um, let's see your finished project might have a circumference of say 90 or 100 centimeters uh, so at 100 centimeters, that half stitch per 10 centimeters uh, gets to five stitches too wide on 100 centimeters. So I'm fine with it being five stitches too big. Uh, but just keep in mind that half a stitch, it might seem silly, but uh, half a stitch really makes a difference. But yeah, for now I'm happy. I got my stitch gauge. Um, so 20 and a half to 21 stitches per uh, 10 centimeters uh, in the width. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I'm also getting the row gauge. So again, I'm gonna find a place. Um, let's see. Oh, my swatch really isn't that long. It just goes to show my swatch is only 16 centimeters and I'm already having a hard time finding a good place to measure. I am going to measure right here. Again, lining it up um, with the beginning of a stitch. So three, six, nine, ten. 
three, six, nine, twenty, three, six, nine. Okay, so I have 29 rows here instead of what the pattern calls for 30 rows per 10 centimeters. So let me just write that down with four millimeter. I had 18 stitches and 30 rows and with three and a half millimeter I have 20 and a half or 21 stitches and 29 rows. As you'll recall, the uh, pattern calls for uh, 21 stitches with 30 rows. So uh, both of my gauge swatches don't match exactly with uh, what stated in the pattern which probably has to do with that I'm not using exactly the same yarn or uh, or probably because I'm not knitting exactly um, the same fashion as uh, the designer uh, but since with the three millimeter um, gauge I'm getting much closer to the pattern gauge than with the four millimeter needles. So I'm gonna uh, go for the three and a half millimeter needles for this project. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope it helped you somewhat in your knitting. Um, if you like this tutorial video, be sure to watch my other videos. And if you really like it, um, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel and you might want to stick around for one of my podcast episodes. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Bye!